Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Heavy Repping. My name is John Tron Davidson, and I'm here once again in our super best, rather sunny test location in the southwest of England. So this week's YouTube video sees episode three of The Science, in which I'm going to be talking about that most durable of plastics, ultra high molecular weight, polyethylene. Now, the reason why I'm covering this is because, as I mentioned in a previous video, this is the one material that doesn't crop up in shops. You can get acrylic, delrin, polycarbonate, nylon, acetal, all that sort of thing. That's fairly common, but when it comes to this material, it tends to have its sort of province in the boutique end of things. And so I thought I would take a little bit of time today and explain just exactly what it is and what it's doing in the Plectroverse. To give you a little bit of a backstory about it, it was developed in the 1950s by a company called Ruhrchemie AG and it's now made by lots and lots and lots of companies in different forms so you can have it as a rod or a sheet. You can also buy it in fibre form. Uh, they've tried to do a number of things with it over the years uh, including blending it with carbon fibre but UHMWPE does not mix well with other polymers and plastics and so it is its own thing. UHMWPE, as it's also known, is classified as high modulus polyethylene and the main difference between it and other plastics is the fact that it has uh, long chains. What do you mean by chains, I hear you say? Well, the easiest way to look at it is it's like the plastic's DNA. So a material like Kevlar, for example, has very, very short van der Waal bonds, and that means that those the, the bonds between the molecules are very short, and it has lots and lots and lots of them, and that's what gives it its strength. UHMWPE is the opposite of that. So what you have is a very, very long chain, very, very long connection between the molecules. Um, but because they're so long, which would normally be a weakening thing, it means that there's loads of overlap in those chains. And so instead of having, instead of it being weak because it's long, which is the normal way of doing it, because they interlace, it means that you get this unbelievably high tensile strength. Now the tensile strength of UHMWPE is significantly higher than that of carbon steel. In certain forms up to 15 times as high. You can have a look on the internet to see about that. It's also got a very high impact strength. It's the highest impact strength of any plastic currently available. It's got more abrasion resistance than anything else. It's self-lubricating. The drag coefficient is unbelievable. It's much, much lower than nylon and acetal. Uh, it's got a very, very low moisture absorption and it's also resistant to acid, concentrated acid and alkalis. Nature of this and the fact that it has these characteristics has meant, of course, that it's ended up being used in a number of different fields, primarily in industry, first of all, where it was used a lot in the automobile industry. Automobile. It was also used in bottling quite a lot, but then it moved into defence, Obviously, as these things tend to do, it's used in things like body and vehicle armour. It's also used in fishing lines and on boats where it's referred to as spectra wire, which I think is super cool. It's also used an awful lot in the medical field, as these things tend to be, but UHMWBPE particularly uh, is used in things like anthroplasty, um, musculoskeletal surgery, so it's used for replacing bits of the spine. Uh, which is an incredibly important thing, of course. Now, characteristically, uh, all, all of the different pletches I've spoken to who used it, uh, including my mate Dan, who's just started making picks recently, has said that it is rough as hell on tools, and that's part of the reason why when you see a company like Plextrum or BHL making these picks, and they seem to cost a lot of money, the fact that the material is so difficult to work with um, is part of the reason that uh, the cost is so high. Uh, it's also because the material itself is not especially cheap. It's still cheaper than catch-in, which is insanely expensive, uh, but the good thing is is that picks like these, um, this is a Plex from Blackmore, these will last for years and years and years. They're super, super tough. Uh, and I have 
cut into these with Stanley knives and then just very gently rubbed it out with um, sandpaper and I'm amazed by how strong they are. They kind of get shiny more than anything else. So the important thing for all of you, oh, the important thing for all of you who are watching on probably your phones on the toilet is why is this material in the Plectroverse? Well, let me explain. Because of the aforementioned characteristics, self-lubricating and all that, uh, it's very, very quick through the strings. Because it is a plastic, it's still quite malleable, so you can make it into whatever you like. And it also has a very, very high grip. Now, this is an interesting topic because I've spoken to a lot of different players about UHMWPE and a lot of the people at work um, have tested the picks that I have. It does very much depend on your skin type. Now, I am going to do a video about skin type in the coming weeks uh, and why certain materials will work better for some people than for others. But the really defining characteristic of this is when you have uh, when you have a material like this, when you're just holding it like that, it feels, as I mentioned before, kind of furry and more like uh, like a dry bar of soap. I think would be the the best way to explain it. But if you get it damp or if you have clammy hands, it bonds to your skin very, very, very firmly indeed. From a tonal perspective, uh, you get a slightly dull front end. Not unlike nylon, but unlike nylon, you get this ridiculous amount of body behind it. And I found that I really like using that material, particularly for doing acoustic stuff, because it really allows, it brings out all of the bottom end and the mids in the acoustic. And if you strum into it really slowly, like that real rum, you'll hear the guitar just open like this. And if you ever want to know just how much depth the guitar has in it, using a UHMWPE Plectrum will pull all of the potential out of that instrument in a way that I promise you no other type of pick will do. When it comes to playing um, single note stuff and chords, I would say that the chirping depends very much on how it's cut. If it's polished to a high sheen, then it'll chirp around the same level as acrylic. Um, not as bad as some materials, but it, you know, it's it's noticeable. But then UHMWPE tends to be cut a lot thicker. Um, most of the stuff I've played has been around the sort of four mil plus mark. I don't think I've played anything under that thickness. From the perspective of everyday use, I could see. I could see players getting very, very attached to that plectrum because the one thing that you notice, apart from the fact that I really wish it had a simpler name, come on, science, it's very engaging. It, it, it feels oddly otherworldly compared to everything else. Tagawa, as I mentioned in the previous episode of the science, uh, is something that feels very alive and feels very sort of natural and a little bit wild whereas acrylics very like this and sort of controlled and it kind of sounds a little bit more surface orientated i would put it in terms of from an eq perspective uh, uhmwp is quite dark uh, and deep rather than being bright and airy and i really like that about it i think it's really good if you're playing a softer style or if you're playing more uh, ambient detailed work where you're looking to create textures. It's also really good, and I'm going to do a video on this separately, but it's really, really good for doing things like um, extended techniques, as they're called, particularly when it comes to, if you use it in a different way, you can do these amazing brush textures with it and all that, which I will talk about later on. If you are interested in this material, there are a few companies that I can recommend, and indeed I shall, so here they are. Number one, obviously, is Plextrum, um, or Purple Plectrums as they're known. Plextrum are first on the list because they make primarily from UHMWPE. They also make from Ultim and um, Aluminium, 
as well. But their range is founded on that and they make it in a variety of sizes from sensible stuff like the Blackmoor and... Uh, sorry. <clears throat> they make it in a variety of sizes from sensible stuff like the Hetfield all the way up to the XLS, which is this giant ridiculous thing. Um, but it's not crazy money. You have to bear in mind when you're buying these sorts of plectrums that they're designed to last for years rather than months. It's the same with stone. If you buy stone picks, it's a similar thing, but we're gonna come onto that in another video. Company number two is the aforementioned BHL. BHL make uh, an enormous amount of stuff from a lot of different materials. They do um, Kachin, Ultem, lots of Ultem, um, PSU and UHMWPE to name a few, but they're getting a special place on the roster because Brock was the first person to introduce me to UHMWPE in the shape of the Megalodon, uh, this incredible blue thing that I got from him um, many months ago now and I've really, really enjoyed it. It was the first time. Uh, it was the first time that I started to understand just how different materials could be, and the finishing is always absolutely impeccable. Uh, it all. It also introduced me to just how tough it was, because before I understood how the grip worked, um, that you had to be a little bit damp to get the most out of it. That uh, I tried scoring it. With um, with a knife as you do when you're doing it with Delrin, and it was like the knife just got totally wrecked, and uh, and all the cuts just sort of disappeared. So quite an experience. But check out BHL for all sorts of things. Company number three is Iron Age. Now I'm mentioning Iron Age because they make the Megalith Ultra. Uh, the Megalith Ultra has a special place in the book of heavy repping because it was one of the first picks I got over eight millimeters and also it is a beautiful piece of engineering. I love the way Alexis has cut it. It's got much rounder edges and like all of his stuff it's really purposeful. Now he doesn't make loads of stuff from UHMWPE but when he does make it from that material it's absolutely killer so I would recommend very much that you go and check it out. So, if you would like to hear exactly how this material sounds, you can go and check out the video for uh, my review of the Iron Age Megalith Ultra, which I'll put in the description. If there's a material that you think I should cover that I haven't got to yet, please leave it in the comments or you can hit me up at Heavy Repping on Instagram or go to www.heavyrepping.com where you'll be able to get in touch with me either way. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Science. I will be back next Tuesday with more things and more stuff and more talking and more pick stuff. However, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. My name is John Tron Davidson. This is Heavy Repping, and I will see you soon. So just remember, if you're not sure what to do in life, rep hard, rep heavy.